You guys, we don't want to show you this, but Landon's having a seizure right now. We just want to come on and tell you know that he's okay. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And today we have a new family to introduce you to, kind of. You may remember the other day I covered a family called the Binghams. Well, this is also the Binghams, except it's the brother of the Binghams. So this is how we Bingham. This is their extended family. Yep, they also have a channel. It like It's like running in the family. Anyway, they're not quite as big, but they are quite as bad. So let's get right into it. This channel is called Our Life in Holland. And no, they have nothing to do with Holland. They don't live in Holland. They're not in Holland. They're just, they're not, it's not Holland, right? So forget it. They are a family of six and they have over a hundred odd thousand subs and they exploit their kids. Shocker! Absolute shocker. We're going to go through a couple of videos today because, well, I actually caught the rage. So, bear with me on this. I might get a little bit angry. Sorry. So, one of their sons has cerebral palsy and is prone to having seizures as shown by this video here and this one 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 in fact i counted out of an approximate 1000 videos that they have on the channel i counted 22 that have directly mentioned seizures in the title of the video that may not sound a lot out of a thousand videos, but that is a fair amount to be clickbaiting your child having a seizure. I'm just saying. Right? And that's not mentioning the ones which don't say seizure in the title, but are still talking about his disability. You guys, we don't want to show you this, but Lance having a seizure right now. We just want to come on and tell you know that he's okay. Yeah, we don't want to tell you this, but we just needed to switch that camera on just so that you knew that this was happening. And this is real time, guys, real time. He's actually having a seizure as we speak. He's in that room right now. He's, he's you know, he's having a seizure. And this is our commentary. We probably won't show it to you, but... We probably won't show it to you. Of course you won't show it to us, because why would you show your child having a fit? right why would you do that why would you put your child in front of a camera whilst he's having a seizure that would be insane do you realize that it would be insane or do you not or do you not even care he's okay guys he gave, it, he gave us permission to turn on the camera just for a minute this annoys me so much trying to assume that your child your eight-year-old child who has a disability is in the middle of a seizure and you are saying that oh he's given us permission to turn the camera on and broadcast it to hundreds of thousands of people this video got 600,000 views did he give you permission to put that in front of the cam did he give you permission to broadcast this to 600,000 people not actually understanding what he's given permission for did you explain to him the ins and the outs before you you know you did this to him or did you just say would you like to talk to the camera now are you up to it are you up to it that is what exactly <laughs> This sort of thing really annoys me. I'm sorry. He's actually doing awesome. He never went unconscious and he's able to talk to us right away afterwards. He's recovering really, really well. You okay? Yeah. Do you feel like you're going to throw up maybe? No. Imagine even wanting to pick up the camera in this moment. Imagine wanting to film your child having such a hard time right now. And the last thing that he wants to do is to be, you know, on show to the world. But no, you need to pick up the camera. See, I can get the point 
if you maybe want to film it for like update and progression purposes to see how he's doing how he progresses throughout you know his, his recovery times and and things that would be normal probably but not to broadcast it to thousands of people not normal and not right and just pretty inhumane if you ask me in fact he was so concerned the second he finished his seizure that he said i don't need to go to the hospital i don't need to go and we said no you don't you was living here i'm just sleeping here i don't really want you to go with me <laughs> you don't want me to no mr i'm okay landon this is really starting to give me the rage you know just turn the bloody camera off stop putting him on show stop putting him in this fishbowl scenario where he needs to be performing even though he's clearly not well enough to be on camera it just it's really heartbreaking mr tough guy i'll sleep wherever you want me to I thought we weren't here because we weren't answering. you want to know what happened? I'm not even kidding you. I was laying on the floor with you for at least 45 minutes. And the cat started meowing and I remembered that they were hungry and I needed to go feed them. So I went downstairs and was going to feed the cats. And all of a sudden I heard this screaming coming from upstairs. So you literally started having your seizure like 30 seconds after I left. Can you believe that? So that's why you thought I was gone, because I had to run all the way up from the basement. But thanks to you for yelling so loud, I heard you all the way down there. Disgusting and inhumane to do this to your child. I don't care what you say. It is really, really horrible. Now, there are a number of occasions where they've done this on camera. Mostly, they just talk about it in the aftermath that their child had a seizure sometimes they'll show like their recovery and they don't insert clips and pictures and stuff of it which is still incredibly wrong but even if they don't show any clips they'll still click beta on the thumbnail and put their child on the thumbnail having had a seizure which is it's just i don't even need to tell you how wrong that is any normal human being knows that this sort of thing is wrong surely i mean any i don't get how any person could actually follow a family that would want to showcase all this because it's not bringing awareness their channel is actually a family channel See the other channels, the ones which claim they are set up purely for awareness purposes, but they they set up the channel under the guise of an awareness making channel and they just film their, their child having seizures and being sick all the time, right? But these aren't even that. These are a family channel, but they clickbait the shit out of their child having a seizure and film the child having a seizure. It it's just so so wrong the thing is when they clickbait all this they know exactly what they're doing it's not just saying oh our boy had a seizure here it is what they're doing is they are carefully designing the thumbnail and the title to suggest something brilliant like oh siblings helped with boy who had seizure or 13 year old helps 10 year old brother with seizure because that evokes an emotion which evokes you w wanting to click more and that is even worse because it's it just goes to show the level of of deceit and and horribleness that is they're trying to get you to watch these videos of their son having a seizure tired day so we went on with our day as we usually do and at this point, they've already shown their boy fully half naked from the top ways up, lying in a hospital bed all plugged into the machines. 
We went to Penning's soccer game and we went to Ashton's soccer game and he really, for the most part, was fine, was fine yeah. other than feeling tired. And we got home and we all kind of took a little breather for a minute. And then Justin and I went to run an errand. With Ava. With Ava. Yep. And we got a phone call. And there's nothing like leaving your 10-year-old son, whom you know suffers from seizures, home alone, being looked after by the eldest who is 13 years of age you'd think that maybe one of you might stay at home particularly as he'd already had little seizures throughout the day and wasn't feeling that great i'm just saying maybe just maybe parental instincts might kick in a little bit and you might you know look after him not leave it to your 13 year old child to look after his brother you're about 40 minutes away further away than we normally are Oh, so it wasn't just like popping around the corner to the shop or anything like that. No, you thought you'd go cross country and leave your child home alone. <laughs> That's a good one. His attorney told us that Lana just was kind of acting a little funny on the couch. And so we FaceTimed and he, again, having a focal seizure for sure. And so we said, OK, we'll, we'll hurry and kind of leave and come home. And then he called me back maybe just a few minutes later saying, Dad, Lana's having like a full seizure. So, you know, where he's like twitching and convulsing and stuff. So I quickly called Clay McNeil and I said, hey, Clay, do you think you'd come over to the house for a minute and just sit with the kids while we're... I take it that's a friend that you could have called just to look after your child in the first place. But no, that's just... Anyway, it's par for the course, right? But other things that you have done is clickbaited and filmed and shown your child in distress when he's gone for his surgery appointment. That's how I always feel. Just a few minutes before the worst. You know when your child is in so much distress because they're scared of the upcoming surgery which they're about to endure and you think, I know, what shall I do? What is the most important thing in this moment? What shall we do? Shall we comfort her, him or shall we just get on with our day? I know we'll do both. We'll combine the two and we'll we'll capture the the emotive moment that I'm being the loving mother that I am and I'll I'll hug him and, and make him feel okay. But at the same time, I'll capture this moment for posterity on camera and show it to the rest of the thousands of people who are just dying to see this loving moment between a mother and son, right? Is that that pretty much what you were thinking in that moment here lando it's okay bud <laughs> love you bud hey he's really nervous you know he's handled it really really well they just gave him some medicine that was supposed to like calm him down or whatever and <laughs> he actually ended up crying and one of the nurses made a joke we don't drink but basically they're like he's gonna be a sad drunk if he ever does <laughs> because he was sad and was supposed to make him kind of gay or whatever no but yeah, so just because you don't drink doesn't mean to say that he's not going to drink. He's not old enough to drink right now, but, you know, just because you have this, like, Mormonism thing going on doesn't mean to say that that's his life forever. I'm just saying that he has the right to choose, and maybe he'll choose drunkenism. Not suggesting he does, but possibly he has a way out to survive to recover after the crap that you've put him through all these years just to clarify for those that are gonna hate on me for this i mean crap by the filming and exploitation not by the the way that he's looked after their child because i've no doubt that they love him and they're trying to look after him but filming his Worst moments for YouTube fame and fortune isn't the best way to do it. But <laughs> I can't believe, I can't believe this, this thought, this one. They've actually put a movie together. His surgery journey, the movie, four and a half hours long it is. Now, I don't know if this was filmed for a movie or as a movie intended or or it's just a number of vlogs all put together because I did skip through it and it was like it seemed to be lots of vlogs just sort of mashed together. But even still, four and a half hours long. If you wanna, <laughs> if 
you want to follow his surgery journey, it's all in one place. Bloody hell. And even worse than that, if you look at this, I'm not going to show any of it. You can see where it says most replayed. And you can see there that it is actually the bit where he's in the hospital is the bit where most people want to watch and ha has been played the most times. Does that not tell you something that that is what people want to see? <laughs> is your child being sick? Don't you think that that is something somewhere slightly wrong or not? Speaking of movies, movies, are, <laughs> movie about broken bones. Broken Bones through the years. Movie about broken bones. Over three hours long. If you want to see all the broken bones that this family have suffered, kids included, just watch this movie about said broken bones. How sick is that? Just to put all your broken bones in one long video. So that anybody that's interested in that side of things don't have to look very far. It's all there for them. Weird. And one final one before we leave it, because this has been quite a long one about oh, so much nonsense. I can't believe it. The scariest flight of our lives. Passengers texting I love you to family members because they thought they were going to die. That's right. That actually happened in one of their flights. I wouldn't have believed it, but I seen it for my own eyes because they filmed it. Jesus. <laughs> Yep, as as predicted, they whipped the camera out and uh, started filming their kids whilst there was this really bad turbulence which could have killed them. Indeed, instead of reaching out to said children that she's filming, she decides just to train the camera on her kids and just leave it there and not, <laughs> not comfort them at all. And as with everybody else who was terrified there, they obviously got the camera out and started filming it as soon as they possibly could. That is, after, presumably, the, the camera flew about the cabin and everything else, right? That was the scariest flight we've ever been on times 10. It was terrifying. I didn't get anything on video when it happened. I just got some of the light turbulence afterwards. But basically it comes out of nowhere. They tell us turbulence is coming. We're like, okay, whatever. We've done this before. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, we drop so far. So yeah, in the interests of transparency, obviously I don't like to lie and I don't like to give misinformation. They did in fact, well, she says that they had a, a really bad turbulence before she turned the camera on. So she didn't turn it on immediately, no. But that being said, she still had the wherewithal to turn the camera on and film her kids being terrified and, and, and just not really seeming to care all that much you know like nothing we've ever experienced and i just immediately turn around and i'm like boys tighten your seatbelts stephanie's sitting with the girls she tightens their seatbelts she's comforting them but what i don't know that happened because i'm in front is poppy who was a lap child went flying up in the air everybody said like all the people behind them said she flew so high in the air it was so scary so then maybe 10 15 seconds later an even bigger drop i'm looking back at the flight attendant that's always my go-to i look and see if they look terrified then 
we're in trouble. If they look like it's gonna be okay, then it's probably normal. But of course my kids are panicking, wondering if we're okay. And I'm like, it's gonna be okay. Just tighten your seatbelt. And Turin keeps saying like, is this normal? Is this normal? I'm like, yes, we're gonna be okay. So in my mind, I'm like, there's no way this plane's going down. But of course I'm also panicking thinking, are we really gonna die? Like this is crazy. Like this is unlike anything I've ever experienced. I'm terrified. Trying to stay strong, Turin finally looks at me and he says, mom, tell me the truth. Are we gonna be okay? Because <laughs> he thinks I'm just like staying strong for him. I'm like, yes, we're gonna be okay. So it was a terrifying couple of minutes and then finally it calms down. The pilot comes on and he's like, I'm so sorry about all the turbulence. We're through the worst of the bad weather. And then at the end of the flight, he tells us how nobody predicted that. He said we were the first flight through that weather and that whoever it is that predicts what it's gonna be like, they had no idea it was gonna be that bad. He said, it is very rare to experience turbulence like that. And I'm like, yeah, I don't ever want to experience it again. Then we land and the lady behind us is ta talking about how high Poppy flew in the air. And she's like, we were so scared that we were starting to like, where half of our kids aren't with us. She said that her husband was getting his phone out saying that they should probably text their other kids. I'm like, okay, we all thought we were gonna die. So I'm, <laughs> oh, that makes me feel quite uneasy if I'm being honest with you about the whole they were going to text stuff about their families to say that they love them and, you know, because they think they're going to die and things like that. But, you know, this is actually a thing when people actually do go down on planes. And it's not really something that should come into the context of YouTube content. In my opinion, it shouldn't be used for content. It's kind of like that guy. Did anybody anybody see that guy uh, quite a while ago? It got done for purposely cr crashing his plane. Pre pretended that he died in a plane. Yeah, it was weird anyway. Right, but these... I don't feel should be filming and talking about how they were in this dramatic plane crash scenario when it really wasn't that. Maybe it was a bit scary, yes. But to use that for content, I just feel a bit uneasy for it. Oh, my heart rate will probably be really high for the rest of the night, but we survived and we're okay and we're home. So as we've discovered in this video today, this is another problematic family and then linked to the This Is How We Bingham channel. They are brothers. They look alike, actually, to be honest, don't they? So, yeah, they could definitely be brothers. They are brothers. Not could be, they are. Problems, problems, problems. There's a never-ending list of problems on YouTube with family vlogging and other types of, you know, exploitation. And slowly but surely, we're getting through quite a few of them. But there's a lot more to come and a lot more to do. So if you'd like to stick around for more, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more. Don't forget to turn the notification bell on comment everything you want to comment down below do you watch this channel at all have you ever heard of them before and what do you think of them in general are they nice people have i got them wrong i'm constantly being told I, i'm misunderstanding these channels then you know then really nice people are they actually nice people or are they in fact the exploitative parents that i'm seeing if you have any other channels or any other topics that you'd like me to cover let me know in the comments below or alternatively email me at dougalofficial at gmail.com and i'll get around to it as soon as possible in the meantime take care of yourselves have a lovely day and goodbye